Hello, everybody. I'll give it a minute to actually go live. It's really weird when I uh, go to do the highlight, it starts exactly when the frames encode, but you guys don't get it live for a good 15, 20 seconds. Praise the flicker! That'd be cool if you could pick your own chat background color. And text color, for that matter. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Oh, yes, I'm sure the curry puns are coming. What's up, D-Chap? Casually Challenge, Jill, nice to see you, Acidic Snail. Raja, Draco, Paladin, thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, I am sick today. I was sick yesterday. Um, I was just going to do um, showing how to cook vegetables today, but I guess I turned it into a red vegetable curry because... Um, that's what I like to eat when I'm sick. I like to eat something spicy um, and filling and good for you. So I hope you're all having a great day. I'm going to hop right in. we got a lot of chopping and stuff to do. But anyways, curry is really simple to make. And the basis for making um, curry at home, I mean, obviously curry has a ton, a ton, a ton of ingredients in it. But all you need is curry paste curry paste and um, coconut milk that is the base and why curry and coconut milk work so well together is coconut milk is this really sweet fatty rich substance and curry paste is spicy and has a lot of depth so the only thing you miss in that combination is your salt level so if you can get the salt level right you have the perfect combination between um, sweet spicy and salty So let's just hop right in. Uh, I'm going to make rice with this. So we're going to get the rice going first, and then we'll talk about how to spruce up your curry and make it taste good. Then we're going to chop a ton of veggies. And the heart of what I wanted to talk about on um, this was vegetables. I used to not like vegetables when I was growing up. And, uh, well, no offense to my parents, but they used to very much overcook the vegetables. And until I worked in a kitchen, I didn't quite understand um, how good vegetables could be. So I want to talk about the order that we cook things in uh, when we're cooking vegetables and how to get the most flavor out of vegetables so they actually taste uh, crunchy and delicious and you get uh, get what you want out of them. Um, now, a lot of people don't like vegetables. They'll say, well, why don't you just do a bacon cast frag? Well, I eat a lot of vegetables. I like vegetables a lot. I like to eat healthy. And um, vegetables can be truly amazing if you cook them properly. Uh, they can also be disgusting if you cook them wrong. And... Uh, I'm going to cover the ones that I really disliked when I was a kid. I disliked broccoli, and I really disliked asparagus. Um, I did not learn how good asparagus was until I was 23 years old. Alright, so we got to get started with the rice, because that's going to take 20 minutes. So, oh, this bag's not even open. Alright, so we've talked about rice before. It's pretty simple. Um, if you're uncomfortable cooking rice, buy a rice cooker. Rice cooker is a great thing to have, uh, though not necessary. Uh, every rice has a different um, ratio of water to uh, rice. Jasmine rice is 1.5 times liquid to uh, to rice. Um, I like to rinse my rice off in water. Uh, Rice has this starchy stuff on the outside, and if you don't rinse it off, you'll end up with a more sticky rice, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it just depends on your application. But for this application, I do not want sticky rice. I want the, the curry liquid to be able to go into the rice, so I don't want it to be clumped together. You guys can't really see, but even when you're shaking the water off, it looks kind of milky, and that's you washing all the starch off. Doesn't have to be perfect, you don't have to obsess over it, but. And since we're doing such a simple preparation of just vegetables, we're gonna use chicken stock for uh, for this application. Adds a little more flavor to the rice. Really, you can put whatever you want in rice, but if you use something besides water, you usually get a little bit more flavor. And then we're gonna use the remainder of this broth to thin out the curry if need be. Uh, some coconut milk is a lot thicker than others. I mean, every coconut has a different fat content, so if you get a very fatty coconut, coconut milk can actually make it too thick and kind of, I don't know, icky. Alright, so we have one cup of rice. We're going to go for one and a half cups of stock. Always make sure you get down on level with whatever you're measuring. 
uh, that'll make sure that it's accurate. Uh, if you look at it from here, like if I'm looking at it from here, it actually looks like almost one and three quarters cup. But when I get down, I can see it's exactly one and a half. And also, lifting it up like this is not effective because your liquid moves around. Um, there we go. So all we're going to do with this is bring it to a boil, and then we're going to bring it down to a simmer, cover, and wait 20 minutes. Done. Where'd my salt go? There it is. Oh, there it is. So I really hate being sick, but uh, knowing how to cook for yourself when you're sick is really good because you don't get stuck just eating chicken noodle soup, which well can get really boring after a while. So I just did a little pinch of salt to the rice. I don't. That's something I just always do. Okay, we'll use the big burner for this one, and we'll wait. Okay, let's talk about curry real quick. There's only a couple points on curry. We had to mess with it. We're going to add garlic uh, garlic to the curry as well, but you want to make sure you saute the curry. It'll become very fragrant, and it releases a lot of the flavor in the curry. If you just add cold curry paste to coconut milk, it'll taste good, but you'll miss, uh, you'll miss another note uh, or depth of flavor uh, if you don't saute it. So is everybody following so far? We haven't done much. Um, does anybody have experience with curry? People like curry, never had it. No, it is not bad that you like your veggies softer, uh, Tadius, but even if you like your veggies softer, um, just for example, if you're, cooking, uh, if you're cooking a carrot and a piece of zucchini together, you need to know when to add them together so they're both the softness that you enjoy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, I like my veggies a bit more crunchy. That's just my personal preference. Okay, well, we'll talk about the three main kinds of curry you can buy in the store. There's three grades. There's yellow curry, green curry, and red curry. Uh, yellow curry is very mild. Um, like if you buy curry powder, that's kind of what uh, the flavor of yellow curry. It's a very mild kind of sweet flavor. Um, green curry is a little more spicy. Red is pretty damn spicy, so um, they all have... Uh, many different ingredients. The actually getting fresh curry is pretty amazing stuff. I've only had it once where it was hand ground and um, it's it's pretty it, it's good stuff. Yeah, and every different every different cultures have different uh, different types of curry. It's really a broad term. Uh, you know, Indian curry is different from Thai curry, Japanese curry. Uh, I just buy my curry paste from the um, from the grocery store. You'll spe more specifically so you see Thai curries in America. So um, this this will be a this will be a vegetarian dish and you're more than welcome to add chicken beef pork whatever you want to this it's gonna taste good uh, I'm just gonna make it make it vegetarian yes rice is incredibly versatile it's basically a blank palate for you to cook on so I'm just gonna wait till this rice rice gets going before we start chopping anything because I don't want to overcook it I'll get my timer set up because I didn't do that last time it worked out okay but Pretty much the directions on the package of rice are going to be about spot on. So if you follow that exactly, um, you should be good. Usually you bring it up to a boil, turn it down to the lowest temperature, cover and leave it, leave it, uh, leave it on there. Well, my problem is when I get colds and stuff, I don't, I'm not hungry because nothing sounds good. So uh, finding things that taste good to you while you s are sick are really important. I know, I know red curry's that for me. And then when I when I'm not sick anymore, when I come out of being sick, I am just starving. I am just starving. Yeah, quinoa would work fine with curry. Uh, the cooking of the quinoa would have to be about perfect, but uh, definitely so. Quinoa is just like just like rice that you can do anything with it. Okay, we have a nice bubble around the edges. I'm gonna get my back burner on now. And we'll turn that down as much as we can. There it is. Okay. You take it off, cover it, boom. That's it. Hit start on our timer. It already started. Cool. Let me get to the rest of the stuff. Okay, so all we're going to do for this curry is um, I'm going to saute garlic, a couple shallots. The shallots are kind of optional. They're just sitting in my, uh, they've been sitting in my fridge for a while, and I want to I want to use them. And we're going to add the coconut milk. Um, we're going to let it steep for a while while we do everything else. And then we're going to thin it out with uh, the chicken broth uh, to, the, to the level that we want it to be. Okay. Move 
my bowl over here. See, my daughter drew these awesome pictures on my mushrooms. Got Fro Guy. And this is apparently Baby Daddy, is what I was told. So we'll go with that. You can frame those. I'm afraid the the bags fall apart in the fridge, but uh, she has no shortage of artwork for me. No shortage of that. She draws on pretty much every bag that comes in the house for uh, food wise. She definitely got my dad's artistic gene. I do not draw. This is about this is about the equivalent of what I can draw on my best ability. So. Uh, I think she's going to be a better artist than me, and that's cool. Okay, so we got everything into sticks. Now we'll cube it. And this seems like a lot of garlic, and it is. I love garlic, uh, especially when I'm sick. It is also one of those things that I can taste, so I usually go uh, more garlic than less when I'm ill. Alright, so shallots, uh, especially if they've been sitting out, uh, you see they look kind of uh, gross around the edges. So what you do is you peel them, so you just make a little cut down and pull off the outside layer. This is peeling your shallots. It's not that that even necessarily tastes bad, but obviously that looks a lot better than what was on the, the other side. It's got to check my rice. Okay, you're never supposed to take the lid off, lid off the rice. However, I am not used to this, uh, not used to this burner at all. So I don't know if the heat's right, and it definitely needed to come up a little bit. Otherwise, it won't be done. And now, even here, I'm going to add the shallots after the garlic. You always just, the whole point of what I'm going to show here is be conscious of when you add things, because everything takes a different time to cook. So I want to get my garlic browned before I add my shallots and my curry, because the shallots will cook very quickly, and I don't necessarily want them to be mushy. All right. So we're going to use this pot for the curry. We're just going to use a smidge of oil, uh, just enough to coat the garlic and make sure the curry does not burn onto the pan. So maybe about a teaspoon would be all. Let that get nice and hot. Garlic is one of the few things you don't want a ultra hot pan for. I always talk about cooking on a hot pan and how it's really important to get color. Garlic will brown up very fast and that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want it to brown up a little bit slower. So for garlic you're looking for a medium high heat rather than that searing hot pan that we'll have for the mushrooms and all the other stuff that we'll be cooking. So if we look at the vegetables we have here today, I have mushrooms, onion, carrot, zucchini, bell peppers, broccoli, and asparagus. So we'll have to figure out the timing on that they're supposed to go in. Uh, let's talk, we know onions cook very quickly, so we'll put these over here. Also, uh, bell peppers. I want these almost raw, because they're crunchy and sweet, and they get mushy and flavorless when they get overcooked. Um, zucchini cooks really fast, depending on how you cut it. Carrots are going to take slightly longer because they're very hard. I still want to crunch on the carrot, but they're going to take a minute. Broccoli, um, probably going to take the longest out of everything. And asparagus also cooks very quickly, so there's a very small timing window on when we wa want to add stuff. Um, uh, one thing you can do if you're cooking at home, especially if you're unfamiliar with uh, something that you're cooking, is take the time to cook, just pull out a little egg pan or something, and cook one little piece of the vegetable or three little pieces of the vegetable and figure out exactly how long it takes to cook to get it to the point where you want it. 
Um, that will that'll make it so you can avoid overcooking or undercooking vegetables. So I mean, if we added all this stuff to the pan at once, it would just be a hot mess. Alright, that probably could have been a little bit harder, hotter, but that's okay. Here, a little bit of a sizzle. And that'll give me time to open these up. But vegetables are a very tricky thing, and they're so, they're so varied in uh, how many different kinds they are, and cooking temperatures, and size, and all that. It's definitely something that takes practice uh, to get good at. So coconut milk will separate, and there's actually a big thing of water, or coconut coconut water under that, but all the fat rises to the top. So that's what makes it creamy and delicious. Coconuts are extremely high in fat, but it is a polysaturated fat. There's three different kinds of fat. There's saturated fat, which is quote-unquote bad for you, polysaturated, which is healthier for you, and polyunsaturated, which is the healthiest. Um, olive oil is polyunsaturated. Things like pistachio nuts and uh, avocados are polysaturated. Um, things like uh, bacon fat and lard are considered saturated fat. So there are quote unquote healthy kinds of fat. Fat is not uh, a bad thing. All right. Now we're cooking with mayonnaise. Yeah, I love avocados too, and avocados are really healthy for you. They have a lot of other stuff besides fat in them, though they are mostly fat-based. <laughs> the whole stick of, yeah, butter is saturated fat, 100%. Alright, let's give this a little stir. You can really smell the garlic now. Um, releasing the aromatics and what you're cooking is very important. If you just add raw garlic to the entire mixture, garlic's never going to reach its full potential for flavor. I just want to see a little bit little bit of browning. We got a lot more cooking to do in this pan, so I don't want to go overkill and have uh, burnt garlic. Burnt garlic is Burnt garlic is one of the worst flavors in the culinary spectrum, in my humble opinion. I think if you burn garlic uh, you're going to have a really bad time. It's one of those things that you can't cover up no matter how much, um, how, how good the food is, you cannot cover up burnt garlic. You, I don't know if you guys can see this, but my garlic is starting to clump up. That's uh, just the nature of garlic. It's very sticky when it's cooked. So this will be a good time to add my shallots, which should add some water to the mix and uh, break it back up. You can also do this with onions. You can not use shallots at all since we have onions and everything else, but I'm just trying to use my leftovers. And uh, you're not going to hurt anything by adding shallots to it. That's, uh, that's for certain. Okay, now the curry paste. I'm going to go pretty generous on this. I like red curry a lot. Red curry is spicy, so uh, do so at your own risk. Now you can always add more curry in later. Um, that's not going to hurt you, but you want to make sure you get at least the base of your curry uh, sautéed and fragrant. Um, it has a very distinct smell when it cooks, and you want to make sure you get a little bit of a little bit of that going on. Turn it down a little bit. So what this does, it releases all the oils in the curry and kind of remarries the flavors with everything else. It also gets the garlic flavor in there. Um, just one of those simple little steps that makes a huge difference at the end. Uh, I talk about this all the time, but when you're cooking simple food, um, you know, 
the details the details are what makes or breaks your dish yeah it looks a little choppy doesn't it might actually be on my end I probably need to reboot my computer but we'll roll with it I'm not dropping any frames which is good okay let's see here yeah that's kinda weird exploit apparently is unhappy or my computer is unhappy or uh, more correctly I'm not so sure. Okay, we got a nice fragrant curry now. Um, I'll have to mess with that um, after after the cast, but now we're gonna add our coconut milk. It <laughs> feels the recent betrayal. I guess so. I'd still use XSplit for this because uh, it's much easier to set up cameras and stuff. But hey. Alright, coconut milk is really good stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to whisk this up, combine everything. We're just remarrying the fat that was in the in the coconut milk with the water. And then we're just going to let this cook down and marry all the flavors. Whoa. All right, we'll give it a quick taste. Is it is it look better now or is it uh it, it just happened recently, I'm pretty sure it looked fine before. It's a bit better, well. Okay, well it is what it is. I'll mess with it. I, I need to update my up X split and do a couple other things. Um Okay, we're going to add just a little bit more curry. It's not quite spicy enough for me with my cold. I can't taste anything anyways, so it's probably spicier than I'd like it if I wasn't sick. And then, of course, I just put my whisk in the water. our base is going to oh boy I'm making a mess over here we're gonna let that reduce down and thicken a little bit um, the fat in the coconut milk will thicken the sauce uh, in time is anybody else having audio problems I mean I could try rebooting my my X split but I'd prefer not to So that makes the videos of the day tricky. Can you sub anything for coconut milk? I mean, you can use cream, but um, coconut milk and curry is a combination made in heaven. I don't like coconut. Let me just say that. I really dislike coconut. I don't think it's very good, but coconut milk and curry is just one of those things that works. Last little bit. Should 
Sure, there's plenty of flavors and textures I don't like. Yeah, you can add milk to thin out your curry as well, for sure. All right, well, we know mushrooms. We've talked about mushrooms before and uh, just how long those take to cook. So we're going to do that first. I don't wash my mushrooms. That is your, uh, that is your choice. And while the mushrooms are cooking, we'll do everything else. I used to hate mushrooms too. Big time. Big time. Now I love them. So we're going to do quarters. I like to do bigger chunks of my mushrooms because they get much smaller than you think they will. Mushrooms are a beautiful thing. I like pretty much, I have not eaten a mushroom I did not like um, in food. It's, uh, it's good stuff. If they're cooked properly, that is. There's so many different kinds of mushrooms. We always see the white and the cremini uh, in the stores, but there is a plethora of good mushrooms out there. Shiitakes, lion's mane, um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, I know a bunch of them. But I guess they are an acquired taste. It's not something you just eat once and really like. The flavor grows on you. my rice timer. I'll bet it's done too. I don't see it steaming anymore. Alrighty. Oh, kitchen timer. Take a quick peek. Oh yeah, we're good. Always want to leave your rice uh, covered for quite a while after it's done. Um, reason for that being is it, uh, okay, that's good. Oops. If you give it time for the steam to get back in the rice, which will make it nice and fully cooked and fluffy, and then we get to have fun with mushrooms. I'll uh, briefly cover what I covered on mushrooms before. You're not going to overcook your mushrooms. In fact, you kind of do want to overcook your mushrooms. So this is going to take a really long time to cook. Uh, we can put these in first. Uh, anytime I'm doing a vegetable dish, mushrooms are always the first thing to go in. Always, always, always. Uh, I really should have left my whisk out. You know, I think I probably need to update my X split and uh, reboot my computer, but... It is what it is, as long as it's bearable for now, I'll get it fixed uh, before the next coast, or next cast. The liquid is red curry paste, garlic shallots, and coconut milk. cleaned up real quick. I'm just going to wait for my pan to get nice, nice, nice and hot, and then we're going to add the mushrooms and we'll cut up everything else and talk about the order you want to cook them in. This looks like a lot of oil, and it kind of is, but this is going to be all the oil that's in the entire dish. If I was streaming a cooking show, I'd use a katana as my knife. Cool, man. Cool. How does everything look now? It looks like it's uh, slightly improved at the very least. Uh, weird, weird hiccup, but what can you do? Okay, perfectly fine now. Whatever. I will definitely figure out whatever the hell caused that uh, in the next week. 
But, uh, that's technology, man. It's never gonna work the way you want it to. In fact, if it's not working, it's working as intended. Okay, uh, I'll bring the whole cutting board over. I really recommend doing this, especially if you're far away from your stuff. Just bring your cutting board over. It's a much easier way to add stuff to the pan. Oh yeah, nice sizzle. Nice sizzle. Nice and easy. Oh, there's a whole mushroom there. Okay, what we're actually going to do after I cook these down, I'm going to pull them out of the pan. Uh, pan space is very important when you're cooking things. Uh, you want to get everything on a nice high heat. So if you don't have a big enough pan, you don't want to keep throwing stuff into it until uh, you can't. It turns everything mushy and unevenly cooks things. So once the mushrooms are done, we'll pull them out and put them in this bowl and then start the rest of our cooking. All right. Also going to add just a pinch of salt to these. Um, we talked about before... Uh, Curry and coconut milk is a nice balance between uh, sweet and spicy, but the missing piece is the salty, so you need to make sure that the salt on your vegetables or whatever else you're cooking is correct. Because then you have that nice balance of salty, sweet, and spicy, which is a great combination. What the salt does as well is it salt extracts moisture, so like if you cure, uh, if you cure meat with salt, um, what you're doing is pulling the moisture out of the meat, which stops it from going bad. So anytime you add salt to something, you're pulling moisture out. So as the salt uh, melts and spreads over the mushrooms, it'll start pulling the moisture out from the inside. Yeah, there you go, Paladin. I've definitely had the wet chalk mushrooms as well. Cooking them this way and cooking them very aggressively for a long time will uh, make them juicy and very flavorful. Uh, another thing to keep in mind with mushrooms is the older they are, the more flavor they have. Uh, maybe that flavor is not pleasant to you. I like old mushrooms. Um, these are kind of old. They've been in the fridge for a week and a half. I mean, as long as they're not molding, uh, they're definitely still good. Yeah, you, you think you're going to overcook them, but you're not. You're definitely not going to overcook them. Um, you'll swear up and down that you're going to burn mushrooms. You're just not going to burn mushrooms. The only time you can actually burn mushrooms is when you first add them to the pan, which is why we're stirring them now. But you'll see they start, they start looking wetter, and uh, that means the moisture is coming out of them. And once the moisture starts coming out, there's literally a very small chance of burning them unless you left them on the burner in the same position for about 15 minutes. No, curry does not have to be spicy. In fact, curry can be very sweet and mild. Uh, I'm working on a spicy curry here, but it does definitely does not have to be that flavor profile. Uh, people definitely have that misconception. Like yellow curries and a lot of other curries are very um, mild, rich things. Um, there's only a couple kinds of curry that are actually uh, spicy. Actually, flipping mushrooms is easier than flipping an egg because you don't have to worry about breaking the yolk at all. And there we go. We see they're starting to look uh, kind of shiny and wet. We're going to add just another pinch of salt here to continue extracting moisture. Mm -mm -mm. I love mushrooms. All right. So we'll get the rest of our veggies prepped up, and then we'll talk about what order we should add them in. I don't know if you guys can hear that through the mic, but you can hear that super, you can hear the sizzle on the mushrooms, and that means that the moisture is really coming out of them. So now I don't have to worry about them so much. One more flip, and then I can kind of just uh, forget about them. Shave those carrots. They deserve it. Give them one more flip, and then we're good. Yeah, there you go. You can see they're starting to get darker, really shiny, and that is not the oil that's making them shiny. It's the combination of oil and water. Now we can't burn the mushrooms. 
Okay, we're not going to do anything too fancy here. I'm not caring about my cuts too much. We're just going to do a straight rings on the carrots. Now, for me, the perfectly cooked carrot still has a lot of crunch in it. Uh, some people like mushy carrots, and that's totally cool. Um, I do not... Carrots are not my favorite vegetable by any means. I think they're too sweet, for my personal opinion. Definitely one of my least favorite, but um, in combination with other things, they can be very good. Okay, zucchini. We're going to go for chunks on this. Uh, I want this whole thing to be kind of chunky so uh, you can get a, you know, a forkful or a spoonful of, of vegetables and have it feel like it's uh, something hearty. Also, the bigger you cut your vegetables, the easier it's going to be to control um, their cooking. If I cut these super thin and tiny, it'll be impossible to get any crunch on them. All right, let's talk about asparagus real quick. I'm going to use about half of this. Maybe we'll use the whole thing. Okay, asparagus. How you cut asparagus. This bottom part down here is extremely woody, hard to eat. Uh, how do you know how much to cut off? Quite simply, uh, just... I need, to, I need to pull up XSplit so I can see at least a little bit. Yes, asparagus is great stuff, especially if it's cooked right. Oh god, it's good. How you know where to cut is take it and bend it. Where it snaps, that's about where you want to cut. Maybe a little bit below. So, you can snap off each piece individually, but since they're all about the same length, we know we want to take about, uh, about that much off. So I'll go right there. They are not like leeks, no. I don't, I don't need, it's its own, its own entity. Now, here's how I like to do it. My, the best part of the asparagus is the tips. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So I usually cut off the tips first so we have those uh, readily available. And then we'll just do this. Now, when asparagus gets mushy, it has this really odd flavor. It, it tastes kind of weird to start with, but... Um, if it gets mushy, it's uh, it's very, it's unpalatable for me. Maybe my, uh, maybe it's that not that way for me. Mm. Yeah, fried asparagus is great. Yes, mushy asparagus is revolting, and I think my childhood um, definitely did not help me in that regard. But um, it is what it is. All right, I hear the mushrooms are sizzling a little bit less. So now we're going to toss them. You can see we're starting to get some nice brown color on them. This is exactly what we want. And you can see the pan is very wet. pan is very wet. Um, we're basically trying to cook most of the moisture off of them. Uh, the moisture is going to get re-added with uh, the, the curry. And the curry is coming along just nicely. Uh, if you run your spoon through it, you can see it's starting to thicken up a little bit, which is great. I don't think we're going to need to thin it down at all with the chicken stock. Let's give this a quick taste. Um, so the key to cooking simple things is always, always, always taste your food. Taste your food and then you retaste it and taste it again. Because as this is cooked down a little bit, uh, the curry's gotten into the coconut milk, our garlic's gotten in there. That's nice. That's nice. I would add more curry paste, but I know it's just my nose being stuffed up that's telling me I want to do that. Okay, uh, this is not exactly the way I wanted the broccoli to look. This is how I had it. Usually it's just one big um, head of broccoli, but I can still demonstrate how to properly cut broccoli with this, these smaller pieces. There's a very specific way uh, to cut broccoli, and most people that don't work in kitchens don't know it. I'll demonstrate why it's important. 
Broccoli likes to fall apart, so we're not going to be using this woody, woody piece. Okay, if you take your broccoli and you say, oh, I want to cut this into two pieces, and you do this, you end up with all this stuff that falls off. So the proper way to cut broccoli is you take the stem, stick your knife in, and then just twist it. And then it comes apart, and you don't get all that stuff falling off. So if you had the big chunk of broccoli, you stick your knife in and you break it into quarters and then you go from there. But all you do is stick your knife in and twist and it pops apart. And you don't ever have uh, that loss of all these little delicious bits. They're like mini trees, yes. Now you can eat the woody part of the asparagus, it's just not my favorite. So, the like example here, if I want to cut this into three pieces, just go about a third over, and then pop the knife out, and it just comes right apart, and there's nothing, nothing at all falling off your broccoli. And it works with the smaller pieces too. Uh, point being, you never want to put your knife through the tree portion of the broccoli, because that's when it starts falling apart on you. All right, our cutting board's getting very full. That's okay. So right about when we're done cutting everything, the onion should be ready. Now, you can use all these trimmings to make yourself a vegetable stock or something like that. Uh, definitely a good base for soups or whatever else you want to do. I don't mind nice big pieces of broccoli. You can cut them as small as you want to. Um, the only thing I don't like is raw broccoli. Uh, if it has any cook whatsoever on it, I am perfectly fine with it. Okay. I'm going to turn this down a smidge. Curry is very unlikely to burn because it has so much water in it, but you could scorch it. Uh, scorching means uh, burning the bottom of the pan. All right. Oh, yes. If you guys can see, see that nice brown color on the mushrooms. That's when your mushrooms get flavorful, when they're coated in that delicious brown. Mm. Mm. Just going to do a quick clean up here on the cutting board. It's always easier if you clean as you go. I used to be a very sloppy cook, and then I worked for a chef that was very, um, I guess the nice way to put it would be anal about uh, stations and staying clean. Uh, definitely changed the way that I cooked. But always cook as you go. Or always <laughs> cook as you go, always clean as you go. It'll make your life um, extremely, extremely easy. Same thing as cleaning as you go. It's all, uh, it's all good. That was the nice way to say it. Uh, he was kind of a jerk, but a very talented chef that taught me a lot. Okay. Um, we got these baby bell peppers. Uh, the reason I didn't grab more of these is bell peppers are very sweet, and we already have sweet in the carrots and the broccoli. So, how I like to prepare these is in rings, and we add these right at the very end, so they're not even really cooked. Also, have to keep in mind this stuff will get reheated, so always keep that in mind when you're cooking stuff. If you overcook something, uh, when you reheat it, it's going to get even more overcooked. So many times you're better off going um, undercooked than you are over. Those are almost done. You can see how much darker those are now. Um, I mean, that took a good that took a good 15 minutes to cook the mushrooms. Um, don't be afraid of overcooking them. You'll be really surprised how flavorful they become in time. So all I'm doing here is pulling out the pith and the seeds. Um, a lot of cultures use the pith and the seeds. Uh, I was always trained not to, so I don't. 
Don't have to get it all out. It's not like the piff tasted bad. It's just, uh, it's different. This is going to be red curry, um, Chibi. Though green curry would work just fine. I went with red because I'm sick and it's a bit more spicy. And uh, that's what I wanted. I didn't say the really nice thing about peppers, I'm not a huge fan of the flavor of peppers, is they add really nice color, uh, which, uh, you know, the way your food looks does, does matter. Oh god, that was a horrible noise. Never drag, never drag the knife on the cutting board. Now, okay, if you don't have a really sharp knife, a uh, trick for these is to cut them in half and then always cut from the inside. Um, it's much easier to cut that way than cutting from the outside. In fact, this will dull out your knife quicker than a lot of things like uh, uh, fresh tomatoes and whatnot. Very hard on your blade. But we have a nice sharp knife, so it's okay. that. And all we have left is the onion and then we're ready to go. I can hear my mushrooms are done cooking, but uh, we're going to leave them on for another minute because it's not going to hurt anything. Let's give them one more flip. Oh god, I just lost the mushroom down the vent. Man down! Now, I will say this, when you cut stuff bigger, like the broccoli and rings and the peppers, it does make it harder to eat, which some people find offensive. I just consider it playing with my food, and it makes the eating experience more enjoyable. Some people don't like that, so be aware. Uh, if you cut things in weird shapes, sometimes it can be really awkward to eat with a fork. Um, I like that. Those are all our vegetables. Okay. Um, so in order of longest to quickest cook time, broccoli going to take the longest, then carrots, then zucchini, then asparagus, onions, peppers. So we're going to add everything in the proper order so everything comes out perfectly cooked. Uh, once again, if you don't know how long something takes to cook, take a small egg pan or something and cook one or two pieces and taste it as you go so you can figure out exactly how long it takes to cook. Now we're going to remove the onions from the pan and the reason we're going to do this, I need a little more oil, the reason we're going to do this is um, there's not enough space in the pan to properly cook things um, and I do not want to have mushy, uh, steamy vegetables, I want to have nice crunchy cooked vegetables. So, uh, be aware of your pan space. If I threw everything in at once, it would literally be a mountain of vegetables, which is not what we want. Okay. We'll probably end up removing the broccoli and carrots after it's done, then we'll cook everything else in the pan. We'll add it back, and then we'll add the curry. And then we'll be done. And man, I really, I really should eat before these segments, because now I am absolutely starving. So what I'm going to look for, um, broccoli, when it starts to cook, it goes very uh, dark green. So once it turns dark green all around, we're going to add the carrots, and that'll be the end of that. Uh, 
Uh, once again, you can add uh, you can add you can add chicken to this, pork, beef. Curry is very versatile uh, in its flavor profile and what you can do with it. Now you can see on the edges here how much greener that just got in comparison. Let's see if I can hold this up. Is that my mom's knife? Yes. Yes, it is. Now, we're also going to add curry to the end of this. Uh, don't want to go overkill, so we're going to have to simmer that into everything. The reason we're going to add the curry at the end is we want uh, we want all the curry to get into these little crevices on the broccoli and the mushrooms and uh, whatever else. want to make sure it's thoroughly coated. Throw it across the room, watch it come back. Mm. Okay, we got a nice uh, little bit of a green coating on the outside. Now we're going to add our carrots. That little 45 seconds to a minute that we waited is all the difference. I'm just going to wash my hands real quick because why not? Going to be playing FTL after tonight. I've kind of decided that uh, I've only streamed about six, six and a half hours a day this month, which is fine. Uh, I want to get back to my seven to eight hour schedule. Um, I've decided to take one day, and I think the day is going to be Saturday, to uh, have a, a slightly shorter cast. So Saturday will, be, Saturday will be my day of rest and recovery, and um, after cooking with Frag. Well, you know, I don't work in a kitchen anymore. Uh, little known fact that real chefs actually sweat sanitizer, but uh, I no longer work in a kitchen, so I lost that. How short? Like four or five hours, but then right back to seven, eight hours every other day of the week. All right, we're definitely getting there. This is going to take a minute. Uh, then we're going to remove this and cook the next three things. Um, and then we'll add everything back with the curry. Don't even care. That's right. All right, we're going to taste our curry one more time to see if the flavor got where we wanted to, if we want any more paste in there. Why do chefs always wear white? Because it appears to be clean. Uh, so when they other people see them, they look like clean and hygienic, which is why having a clean apron and coat is important to a chef. That's pretty darn good. I can't taste very much, so I'm hesitant to add more spice. It's also um, it's also a sign of yeah. It's also a sign of your cleanliness as a chef. If you can go through a tire day without dirtying um, the hell out of your dirtying the hell out of your coat, then you uh, it's a sign. It's a respect thing. So that's the reasons that I know that chefs wear white. Okay. Well, we got a little bit of brown on our broccoli. That's okay. But tasting everything, really good. I'm sure you can hear the crunch while I'm chewing. It's exactly what you want. That's what I want, anyways. I still want the crunch. Now, I'm gonna add zucchini.
Now a little bit of browning on these vegetables is not a bad thing. But we're gonna add our curry soon. I don't care, guys. It's his kitchen, too. If he needs to eat, he needs to eat. Okay. Turn it down just a little bit. Uh, how we look at zucchini is it'll start getting slightly opaque on the inside, and that's when we know we want to add everything else. Everybody always thinks streamers are a lot taller than they are. We're really not. I'm only 5'10", 5'11", depending if I'm crouching or not. Okay, I'm just going to add a splash of chicken stock here. Just a little bit of liquid to keep it from browning up any more than it has. That'll all cook off, uh, so it's not a big deal. That will also help release some of the mushroom stuff that we cooked onto the pan, so that's all flavor. Yeah, I think man's pretty tall. I think he's 6-something, six 6'2". Streamers are not tall. We're all short, tiny people. Fact. Okay. Well, maybe you can see this, but you can see the tips start to become opaque. Asparagus and onions should take about the same amount of time. Then we'll add the peppers. Whoa, God! Add the peppers right in. Uh, as I said, I should bring my cutting board over. That's exactly why you bring your cutting board over with you to put the stuff in. So if you're going to cook a lot of vegetables, uh, partition everything out to be... Um, in sections, uh, on the sections that you want to cook them. I don't think my pan's going to be big enough, even after all that. I think I need my rondo. Oh man, it's all the way up there. Oh. Didn't see that coming. Who does that? Oh, I did that. Yeah, I did that. I put that up there with the lid. Uh, duly noted, I won't do that next time. Duly noted. So this should be like the perfect amount of curry, to be honest. I'll take it. Did the cam move? I bet it did. Okay, so I'm going to get the other pan heated up so we have a smooth transition into heating up the curry. I didn't want to use a second pan, but uh, my space space limitations got up to me in this pan. It's a lot of vegetables. Oh, uh, look at you, backseat. This is this is the new uh, this is the new FTL door open. Is the uh, the drawer open? Enjoy. You're welcome. Of course I am, Marshmallow. Of course I am. Okay, we're going to need to salt all this, because if we don't get the salt in there, we're going to have a problem. Once again, the balance we're shooting for here is salty, sweet, and spicy. So all I'm waiting for here is the most slightly translucent, like very slightly translucent, like that, except for across all of them, like a little bit flimsy. Fear the day he learns to turn the O2 off in the kitchen. Be warned, it, the day's coming. All right, so this pan should be nice and hot now. Uh, I don't want it to be too hot. 
God, I'm sloppy today with my sautéing. Okay. Add back in our cooked veggies. And yes, this looks like a lot of food because it is. And I know I'll eat it over the next uh, three days. Okay. So this is where the last part of the cooking comes. We undercook just about everything because we knew we were going to do this and have the curry be uh, the star. grab that rubber spat again because that's what I should be using. Oh yeah, that's nice. So we got a nice thick red curry. We got nicely salted vegetables. I'm just going to let this steep for a few minutes and continue to cook the asparagus. Once the asparagus is cooked, everything should be perfect. And then we'll plate up. Yes, it was Thai curry paste. Thai curry paste is the most commonly found in grocery stores. There are many great types of curry. Uh, you can find them if you go to um, uh, you know, ethnic stores and stuff like that. Um, Indian curry, Japanese curry, uh, all kinds of curry. But Thai is the most readily available. It is very colorful. And it's going to be tasty, too. Let's taste a little piece make sure we're on the right pace. Mm-hmm. That is some good stuff. Now, red curry is not like, uh, like, oh my god, this blew my face off, like uh, eating like a ja jalapeno or something. It's something that um, it comes, it comes after the sweetness goes away. Yep, indeed, Kagar. Indian curry is definitely different than Thai curry. Uh, very good, though. All, all curries are good, in my opinion. Okay, so we got a really nice base here. I'll grab uh, stuff to plate with, and we'll get the rice set up, and by that time we should be just about ready. Well, I hope that was informative. I mean, the whole purpose of this was not to make a curry dish. It just kind of happened. The pur purpose was to show that you have to be conscious of how long it takes to cook things if you want to have uh, if you want to have good tasting vegetables, if you want to have um, crunchy vegetables, or uh, not have overcooked stuff. You really have to pay attention and uh, um, treat treat your product with care. Oh yes. Oh god, that looks so good. I'm so hungry right now. now I don't like to go super heavy on rice on these things. I'm just going to do a little little spoonful per. It'll be mostly vegetables. The rice is a nice texture thing though. You see our rice is nice and yellow. Squeeze the chicken stock. Um, it's still going to taste about the same as if you use water. Just a little more salty and a little more depth of flavor. You see, when you leave it, uh, you leave the rice sitting on the counter like that, it really falls apart and, uh, well, not in a bad way. It's very fluffy, easy to work with. If you pull it off and use it right away, um, much more difficult to work with. Okay, get one more. But always take care of your product, and if you don't know how to cook something, don't wing it. Uh, take the extra five minutes to figure out how long it's going to take to cook something. Okay. That's it right there. We are done.
Yeah, there's tons of great um, sites with recipes. Uh, Epicurious, cooking.com, there's a wide plethora of them. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do for next week. In fact, you know what I'm going to say right now? I'm going to take... Um, Next week is going to be off of Cooking with Brad because I need to come up like t two months in advance of what I need to do. So uh, we'll take one week off next week and then I'll have a, an actual plan that I can write out um, of what we need to do. I'm just so far behind on my time right now. Now this may seem silly using a slotted spoon, and it kind of is, but I want to be able to pour the liquid over equally on these. Yeah, I kind of want to focus on, oh, I don't know, fish and chips is great, but uh, I want to focus on basic stuff. I mean, this is this is about as simple as it gets. Not in the execution of the timing, but uh, I mean, rice and coconut milk and curry is a great base for many things. Okay. Looks like we'll have a few veggies left over, and that's fine. I'll eat those by themselves right now. Yeah, seafood will definitely happen, uh, especially when I cover scallops, because those are my favorite. Okay, that'll be my secondary meal. I need to eat something big. I ate hardly anything yesterday, because I was sick. Okay. So now we have all this liquid left over, and this is what makes it good. This is going to soak into the rice and be delicious, so pour that on over. And there we go. Get the last little bit out of here. We have red curry vegetables and rice, which is my pretty much ultimate sick meal. That's uh, that's what I want when I have a cold. So that's enough food for the next couple days. It'll get me through the uh, the worst of it. I got some dishes to do when I get off a cast. Yeah, that's the extra vegetables, Reed. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Um, smell o vision. Yeah, I'm gonna eat at least the vegetables. Probably, probably one of the bowls too. I'm very, I'm very hungry right now. Yeah, I'll teach you guys how to Dougie, but I believe we're going to take one week off next week so I can fully plan. Uh, hell, maybe we'll do it if I can come up with something, but I uh, I need I need some planning time. I feel like I'm behind on my planning, which is never good. All right, guys, what, what's going to happen now is I'm going to remove subscriber only. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, just one week off, and then uh, I'll have actual plan a couple weeks ahead, which is what I want to do. So um, I'd like to have two weeks ahead planned. Uh, so I need to do some recipe planning, which takes time. So I'll use the time I'd be preparing for this to uh, to do that. All right, so we're going to take it out of subscriber only. Thank you all for your patience. I do appreciate it. I'm going to load up the stream downstairs real quickly, and then I'm going to come upstairs and eat and uh, tidy up a smidge, and uh, then we'll play some FTL to finish off the night. So thank you. Love you all. Thank you for the awesome crowd tonight. I hope that was informative and uh, helps you guys cook some curry. Um... God, it's so good. I need to eat. So be back online in just a moment.